Angel Reese, she tied Tina Charles mm-hmm. for the most double doubles in the season by a rookie 22. All right, she's going to obliterate that record, right? And then the things that you see on this very polarizing Twitter verse is you bring up her shooting percentage. You bring up the fact that she's grabbing her own rebounds and everything else. I don't want to get into that part. I want to ask you, do you think that in time, Angel's touch around the rim will increase because it almost seems unfair to expect a player to have that type of motor as they age. Like, not mm-hmm. to say that you don't have the skill to rely on, but I'm saying as you get older, will that second jump come as quick? Do you think that she will be able to compensate or sort of, you know, shall we say, join that adrenaline with just added touch around the rim to make her a more efficient player. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Um, even even just talking to Angel this past weekend for the game, like she cares about being versatile. She cares about getting better. Um, she's a rookie. You know, like it's so cool how the, the woman's side game of basketball is growing where we're not putting more pressure and expectations, right, on these young players because they've had such a following. And so I think some of these expectations for her are unrealistic. Like she's a post player and a post player dominant minute league in the best league mm-hmm. in the world and so her shooting a low field goal percentage understandable right I-, I think the touch is going to improve i think she's going to get more skills and get better but i think for right now what she's showing us is she's elite an elite rebounder uh rebecca lobo tweeted this other day even if we took away yeah, yeah the offensive rebounds that she's gotten from her own missed shots she would still lead the league in offensive rebounds folks like uh, she's elite at it. I I kind of have almost never seen someone have a game plan where it's like, let me just get it up and get free, and then I know I can get it back. And 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 nobody else has done it. I, I think <laughs> there's so much you know scrutiny on her game and like how she's scoring or how she's getting these rebounds and like stat stuffing and things. If they could box her out and stop her from rebounding, they would. They can't, which is why she's leading the league in rebounding. Which is why it's like. Uh, quite honestly, like I am tremendously impressed because I did not see this for Angel. I was concerned about Angel at the pro level. I didn't think that she had enough moves and I wasn't sure if her physicality was going to, to stand and, and to and to look like a woman playing against other women. Right. But right, she has right. literally babied some grown women in this league on the boards. Um, so I think she'll be quite fine and I think she'll grow uh, and she has plenty of time to get better. And quite honestly... I've seen a little bit of growth from her just in the Olympic break. She's come out the second Mm -hmm. half of the season. She's knocked down mid-range shots off the face-up, shooting a confident lefty jump shot. She's also added a couple of moves to her game underneath the basket. But again, she's a rookie. She's growing. These things aren't going to look beautiful at first. I I agree, though. Give her two years. In two years, Angel will be one of the best players in the league. Yeah, I actually think she has that ability. And I think she's that hungry. That that one that's the like the relentlessness the the want to be great you know all of that type of stuff and like you just said the Olympic break the fact that I don't think that we give these women enough credit for going directly from the college season which ends in April mm. to starting in the W it ain't like the NBA where they got the whole summer to rest their bodies to get adjusted and then coming to October and be ready. These girls are coming straight from college, getting drafted and stepping onto the floor like a month later, a month and a half later. Like that's that's a lot to put on a 20, 21 year old and to play a more physical game and to play a more competitive league than you've ever played in. And your entire life is going to take an adjustment. Speaking of that, Caitlin Clark in the fever. Mm. Are they going to secure a playoff spot for the first time since 2016? Because it's looking like they are trending upward. Yes, it's looking like they are. Um, Right now, they're seventh in the standings. Um, They're still slightly below 500 by two games. But in this league, that will get you a top eight position and you will get to the playoffs. So the top eight make the playoffs. Um, You know, they had back-to-back number one picks, right? Last year, you had Aaliyah Boston, uh, played under Don Staley at South Carolina, had a fantastic career. Uh, But Aaliyah couldn't do it herself last year. And it was still a very 
very young team around her. You add now Caitlin Clark, some of the point guard position that helps make others better and facilitates like we've never seen anyone do in a rookie season. Um, and then other young players have gotten better. Um, and so I totally think that they will secure a playoff spot. Um, and I think that they should. This is expected. You shouldn't get back-to-back number one picks and not be able to get yourself to the playoffs. To be quite honest, I don't care how young or old you are. If you're bringing the best player in that's available year after year, it should take about two. And to be quite honest, it was a point guard and a post player. So it was perfect for them. They put really good pieces around them. Uh, Kelsey Mitchell is having a career year. Uh, she is a vet in the league, been playing six or seven years. Uh, but she's finally in a comfortable position with a point guard that actively seeks to give her the basketball. Um, and honestly, honestly, like the fever just have so much behind them. You know, it, it's it's all it's the Caitlin Clark train. If, if we're being quite honest, that's behind them. And so people want them to win. People believe in them. And so I think they also have that boost behind them. Like, come on, we've got something to prove. You know, we've got it's a confidence thing. A hundred percent, man. Half of everything. I feel like I keep saying it, it's just confidence. You got to have the belief that you actually belong out there, that you actually can do it. And I think that this young team has that belief and they're getting better. Every single game that I see them play, they're connecting more. They're talking more. The defense is better. It's somebody new stepping up. Lexi Hull is maybe 5'10". That, but one of the best perimeter defenders that we see in the league right now. That is nothing without her confidence level, thinking that she can guard some of these players and then her work ethic to show. Um, So I feel like they definitely will be in the playoffs. The question then becomes, can they give somebody a tough first round? Right? Like first round Mm -hmm, is best mm -hmm. out of three. So you got to try to at least win one. Winning one would be an accomplishment. And that's not no disrespect. Like winning one would be an accomplishment. Um, But we'll see. We'll see. I think also, you know, you talk about luck. Luck sometimes is matchups, right? And who you're getting paired with. And I think there are a couple teams at the top of the standings that if they get matched up with, they could give them a run for their money. So we have reached the uncomfortable part of this W discussion with Aisha. Okay. So I know my voice just got I'm low, ready. but I, that wasn't that wasn't funny intended effect. No, 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 no. It's just on the rundown. It's on the rundown. It's on the rundown. So because John put this there, maybe you put it there. So I feel like it's not necessarily uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel like we're, we're leading into something. Maybe I'm leading the witness mm. here. So, you know, we have reached a point in the season where we can start talking about awards and who are strong candidates and everything. Oh, Ice gave me the shimmy. She ready for this. All can right, I tell bet. you why? Cool. Let's, I was asked to be a voter this year. So me sitting Whoa. here talking, yeah, now I'm like, hold on. Like, I actually count. I matter. I matter in the W world. So, yes, I'm excited. This is that that vote. Trust me that when I when I was notified that I would get my first vote, it was like, are y'all serious? <laughs> y'all like y'all like it was like y'all not just let me in through the roof. <laughs> y'all opening the door for your boy. Oh. <laughs> For your boy, oh, I was, I was, hey, I was twenty six, mm. and I was like, they don't know who they just left. <laughs> Bats, the whole hood coming with me. No, no, but so the awards are coming up. Mm. We we've slightly discussed MVP. I feel like I know where you're going with that, yeah. right? Yeah, there's Asia Wilson. Yeah, um, I I do think though, with the way this season is going for the Aces, because we talked about the most valuable player on a team. And that obviously implies mm-hmm. that the team has to be a very good team, right? We're not picking the most yes. valuable player yes. on the worst team. I also will yes. say that Nafisa Collier has made a very good argument for herself as of late with the Minnesota Lynx. They're third in the standings. Each team has about uh, nine to 11 games left. And I think if things don't take a good change for the Aces and they drop a couple more games, I definitely think that there are a couple of voters who will look to Nafisa Collier, who has the Minnesota Lynx as the top three team in the league. They're the best team in terms of defense, and their offense is high-powered. She scored back-to-back 30-point games. I mean, like her, she's shooting 60% since the Olympic break. Like, period, 60%. Like, she's barely missing. Um, And so I do feel like if she continues on this, there will be some voters who are like, hey, like, their team, this team is going this way. This team is going this way. I could see it. But I still think that it is Asia Wilson because of her numbers and what she's doing and, and just tracking in terms of um, she is two points above the average, the highest average that someone has averaged in this league. Yeah. Like, oh. like shattering that, like shattering that. So I feel like because of the numbers, yes, but I feel like Fee is making a good, a good argument for herself. 
it sounds like you're trying to talk yourself out of Asia Wilson and then comments sense. Mm. And then it's sort of just going to come back and hit you and be like, nope, not, not. I just, I'm, I, don't, don't overthink I it. Want my, don't overthink I want it. Don't, my don't, audience, don't be the one. I want my audience to be, be informed. I want my audience to be informed. And I'm informing you that there is someone else that is playing at a championship MVP level. Not at the same mm-hmm. level, but it's at an MVP level. Mm-hmm. Don't overthink it. Like, that's the one thing that I, if I could pass along some message to you, you asked me earlier about the age difference. You said, should I call you Unk or Big Bro? And I didn't realize if you were saying that as a joke, but as Big Bro here, I'm going to say, don't overthink it. I was it. joking. Now, yeah, yeah, but it, it hurt my poor little heart, bro. I swear, I was like, damn, am I that old? Like, I thought my hairline was holding. Oh my God. I took some good... I took some pictures that may vote this weekend. <laughs> I'm thinking that I'm like, you know, I'm thinking I'm chilling here. And she says, Unk. Er- like I'm 55 years old wearing some sandals with the holes in them or something like that. Cool, cool, cool. We going next. <laughs> Rookie of the year. It's two, is it is it two candidates? Is it just two yeah, candidates? Yeah, it's two candidates. It's two candidates. And anyone else, their team isn't doing well enough to get them considered. Uh, and that's just quite honestly the truth. Um, here's what I'm going to say. My pick right now would be Caitlin Clark. Uh, I think in what she's doing in terms of her scoring, her rebounding and her assist numbers for the fever and playing that point guard position and where she has, where her team is in the standings. Um, I think you give her the nod right now. Uh, what I, I keep it honest and critical. My concern with Caitlin Clark is her turnover numbers. She, she leads the league in turnovers, but since the Olympic break, she has worked on those. And again, this is why we have breaks so people can get better and develop their game and look back at film. Um, on the other side, Angel Reese is having a, a terrific season, quite honest. Um, and I think, you know, from an expectations level for being quite honest, Caitlin has the higher expectation. She has the higher level to meet, right? The higher proof to meet than Angel. I think Angel is just shocking us, to be quite honest. Right, You know, right. um, whereas Caitlin, it's like, no, 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 we expect you to get a triple-double. We expected you to be the first rookie to do this, this, this numbers in this amount of time because you played the most amount of games at the beginning of the season, but we're just going to skip over that. And we expected these things from you. So I think in the race, we also have to factor in our expectations of what we have for these two players. Um, but I think Caitlin is getting the, the nod right now. Yeah, I think I saw a stat that says she has the most games of 15 points and five assists in any season of if any player in any season in WNBA history. And like you said, we still got a decent chunk of games left. So she's breaking records as a rookie with, like you said, the turnover stuff. But I feel like I've seen the growth yeah. in how she's reading the game yeah. from the first segment of the season to now. Now. Most improved. Who you got for that? Oh, this is my favorite one. Because if you have not watched Kennedy Carter play basketball this season, that is your homework this week from me. Please go watch Kennedy Carter for Chicago Sky. Everybody thought she was just the goon. Hey. Everybody literally thought that she was, oh, we're, that's the girl that knocked down Caitlin Clark because <laughs> she can't stay in the league. And then you mess around and be like, oh, no, nah, she getting buckets out here. Bro. Well, my hot take, Kennedy Carter. Oh, come on, bring Kennedy it. Kennedy Carter should be on the next Olympics team. If it were not for politics, that's it. She will be that good. She is that good. I have not seen a player in the league that can stop her first step. I have not seen a player in the league that elevates higher on a mid-range pull-up. I have not seen someone that's that dynamic on the basketball other than Kelly Copper. That's what I compare her to is like Ka Copper, but a, a, a shorter version. But literally, they have a little more com- a little more compact and a little more compact, right? But Kennedy Carter also has started to grow her game a bit and shoot more threes, right? So there's an evolution to it, and I think that's where she's getting to. Um, the day that and she's working on this and growing on this, and you can see it. But she plays the game with so much passion. When she can learn to manage her emotions in the best way, she will be one of the best players in the league. Uh, she also plays two sides of the basketball. See, so athleticism that we see offensively is that. Um, But I think for her, my most improved goes to her because one, Chicago right now and the way that they're playing, they're doing everything through her since the Marina Mabry trade where they, um, their point guard went to Connecticut Sun. She's had to step up and had more of the, more of the burden, had to carry the team and has done that. Also her assist numbers have gone up, Um, but definitely one of my favorite players to watch in the league. And she is playing for a coach that believes in her. I think Teresa Weatherspoon has pulled out the most out of Kennedy Carter. And so, where she may have had trouble with other teams and teammates and connecting. It's so beautiful to see a player who is thriving in a system that, you know, people believe and support them in. I have played in systems in which I wasn't supported 
and my game tanked because nobody believed in my ability, right? Because mm, of whatever. Mm. Um, and so you can just see that if she continues to play for this coach and this team that believes in her, that thinks she's one of the best players in the league, she is going to rise to that. Um, so my most improved right now is Kennedy Carter. I think she was in the running for six women of the year, but she played herself into a starting position. Uh, and so I, I think she's going to get that. And I and I think she's earned it. Now, you just mentioned Coach Wetterspoon. Mm. So we're going to go Coach of the Year. Yeah. Is that your coach of the year? It is not my coach of the year. It's not my coach of the year. Even though she she gets all the antics and, and like talking to her, meeting her for the first time. She just, man, has such a presence about her. Um, but my coach mm-hmm. of the year would be Cheryl Reeve uh, right now for the Minnesota Lynx. Again, I'm high on them because of the way in which they play. If you watch them play, guys, like there are just not many holes in their system at all. Um, and they have some bench depth. They have some good players off the bench that can play. But I think... The roster that she's put together, she acquired a really big free agent in Courtney Williams in the offseason, which was strategic. She got rid of a couple of guards that no longer fit her system. Um, her team has gelled well. They're high on the offensive and defensive side. Uh, and Cheryl Reeve has won four WBA championships. Um, and so it's a little dangerous for the rest of the league. Like, I don't know how much we factor that in. We always think how good a team is playing, right? And like, oh, this player right, is going right. off. But you also have one of the best coaches the league has ever seen with a team that's also going off. You know, um, so the X is a no strategy towards the playoffs. Um, and, and maybe if they get to a finals, the Cheryl Reeve is not the coach you want to be going against. Uh, but I think she's done a fantastic job this year. 